medication safety, I sort of talked to you about this earlier. Medication safety starts at drug development. So at, you know, when you're a scientist in the lab or a biochemist or, or whatnot, or even nowadays sitting at a computer, some sort of doing some sort of genomics or some sort of drug development, it really starts there. And it never really finishes it. Because we know that, you know, the system of which a drug gets to market and goes through trials, goes through different phases of clinical trials, and continues on into widespread use. And there's always an opportunity to learn from what's happening or learn for, about interactions, learn about adverse effects or allergies. And some of these don't manifest themselves until many years into treatment, so 10 to 20 years. And some of these don't manifest until another agent is brought into the mix. If you start, if you're on this drug and you start a new medication, then there's some interaction and we should be vigilant for that. And even some of them don't show up until next generation. So it starts at the start and drug safety or medication safety never ever really finishes. So the way I like to think of things, because I'm a simple man as I've explained, is medication errors happen where humans meet medications outside the body. So when we're actually selecting the medication we want to take, or when we're learning how to package it or label it or draw it up in the syringe. Adverse effects, drug interactions, allergies, happen at the human medication interface inside the body. So that's the, uh, the uh, chemical constituent and your biology, your physiology, um, uh, the way your own biochemistry works. So, and the way I often teach uh, students about this is this little fellow, um, he's taking his medications. It's not sort of the most appropriate way to take medications, and I certainly wouldn't counsel that, and he probably could benefit from some sort of compliance packaging or something like that. So this is the, our fellow taking some medication, and medication errors, like the one he's exhibiting here, is sort of happens outside. All our things like allergies, adverse drug reactions, drug-drug, drug-disease interactions happen on the inside. And the cool thing, or the interesting thing, or the useful thing about learning about the whole spectrum is that if you know of something that happens on the inside, you can design some sort of procedure or design some sort of system that prevents it from happening again or does it the best from happening again. And as, as Peter mentioned earlier, as we've mentioned earlier a few times, if you know of an allergy in a person, ideally you can set up your systems, your medication or your national medication chart or your pharmacy checking software so that when that person is about to get exposed to that drug again or is prescribed that drug or a similar component, the system kicks in and flags you or stops it or prevents it from happening. So same thing with uh, drug disease interactions or drug drug interactions. If you're on morphine and you get prescribed an antibiotic, you can set up a system that antibiotic plus warfarin flags, get your INR checked more, re more frequently or uh, you know, consider some other um, process improvement. And we know that prevention is cheaper, it's more effective than treatment. And so if our fellow, for instance, develops a drug-drug interaction, you can set up a system to reduce the likelihood of re-exposure, some sort of re-exposure prevention system. And then in my mind, any subsequent re-exposure should be considered a medication error. So that's back in from the ADR side, back into the medication error side. So if you know someone has an allergy, like the first time, okay, you didn't know Okay, it's a, an atypical reaction or some sort of allergy or some sort of interaction. But now you can set up these systems to prevent that. And once you know that happens, if it happens again, that's the medication error that hopefully you can design out of, of the process. So you need programs that do all of this from the start to the finish, from the medication error incident problem that sort of ICMP Canada works on to the adverse drug interaction, um, allergy or, or drug disease interaction or whatever other inside the body interactions that happen. And you need these programs to talk to one another because they can inform one another. A number of countries do not do this well. Canada does not do this well. 
ISMP Canada, we're a non-governmental body, we're outside of any regulators or, or any governmental influence. Um, the pharmacovigilance, the people in Canada who collect uh, ADRs, interactions, other things, rest inside of government. And they're nice people. We get along well with them. We talk. Um, but we don't work together. We don't coordinate what we're doing. And it's often a long time before we figure out that we're sort of working on the same thing. Or what we do can help them really, you know, help the process improvement or help the system. So we don't do this well but we're starting to change. We have new legislation that allows us, that encourages us to work together much better. And we're looking to other countries, other organizations, um, other areas of the world that do do this well. And we, you know, what we found out is that New Zealand really does this well. Okay, their MERP program and their CARM program that Michael Tatley is gonna talk to you about uh, coming up um, really work well together, and despite sort of their, you know, the MERP, uh, the youthful age, um, has really made some difference in respect to how quickly we, you can get information out there. So New Zealand is really one of the models we're interested in, or Health Canada is interested in, and, and we personally are interested in looking at how it works. So you seem to have a much better picture, and you seem to work together in New Zealand much better than we do. So thank you very much. I'll bow now.